the Supreme Court upheld High Court's judgment. High Court means Judicial Commissioner's judgment, stating that High Court was within its parameters to set aside both the lower subordinate courts judgments on the ground which does not stand and we all know today that that ground does not stand that somebody has moved an application post filing of a suit does not give a defense to the suit. It is in Varyam Singh's judgment of 1954 Supreme Court, the Supreme Court laid down certain parameters. So, 1954 itself 227 clarification began. Hmm? And the Supreme Court held that it is true that under Article 227, the High Court cannot go into the facts of the matter. High Court cannot assume appellate or revisional jurisdiction under Article 227. Because appellate jurisdiction are separate, revisional jurisdiction are separate and supervisory jurisdiction is separate. And this was confirmed, this view of Supreme Court was confirmed by Katina of judgments of Supreme Court, including Chandrasekhar Singh versus Siaram Singh, 1979 Supreme Court, then Umaji Keshav versus Radhika by 1986 Supreme Court and as late as 2003 when two landmark judgments came one was state through special cell New Delhi versus Navjot Sandhu Elias Afshan Guru, 2003 Supreme Court and another very important landmark judgment to give a clarification of 227, Surya Dev Singh versus Ramchandra, Surya Dev Rai versus Ramchandra Rai, 2003 Supreme Court where the Supreme Court laid down the parameters clarifying that although unlike the High Courts of England, High Court of India under Article 226 and 227 appears to be quite similar. That is the reason of confusion. They are quite similar because, as I said, 1935 Act sub clause 2 is removed. So, even judicial superintendence is assumed by High Court under Article 227. 226 prerogative writs, and if you remember 226, it is wider than Article 32 of the Constitution of India. The powers of the Supreme Court are under Article 32 to give prerogative writs. But the Supreme Court power under Article 32 is lesser than Article 226 power given to High Courts 
because here the writs can be issued against the violation of part 3 of the constitution that is fundamental rights and article 226 reads for the and any other violation of law which is missing in article 32 so article 32 limits up to violation of fundamental rights 226 says violation of fundamental rights or any other rights given under law so that widens the scope of 226 further article 226 the high court can issue a writ against a person authority or the government which is again a wider provision but we are not talking of 226 today some other day I am just giving a correlation so that you understand the value of 227 vis-a-vis -vis 226 because 227 has to be compared with 226 then only to be understood about this clarification because there is no watertight clarification so I will give you certain bifurcations for simple understanding of yours that where and what are the limitations of 226 and where and what are the limitations of 227 where the 227 applies and where 226 now the primary difference between 226 and 227 is that under article 226 the high court has the power to issue certiorari among other writs I am just taking certiorari certiorari means to quash and set aside the order passed by any governmental authority or subordinate court person authority violating the right of the litigant that's it the high court cannot go beyond it if you disclose that the order passed by the subordinate court or tribunal is in flagrant disregard of the provisions of law the high court can quash and set aside but under article 227 the high court can go further it can quash and set aside and additionally can do two more things if you could succeed to satisfy high court the high court can issue directions to the subordinate court to consider the suit or the application or the petition afresh which under article 226 the high court cannot do it is only under article 227 the high court can set aside quash the order and give directions to the court below to consider the proceedings afresh one step further the power under article 227 the court has not only this afresh if you could further satisfy succeed to satisfy high court it can substitute an order passed by itself as against the order of the subordinate which under article 226 the high court cannot do that means instead of remanding the matter back to the lower court the high court itself can pass a fresh order and substitute the subordinate court's judgment it can simply say that forget that judgment I am passing that this is final now this is the widest power provision only under article 227 of the constitution to substitute a judgment in place of the lower court's judgment which is not there 
so in case as a practicing lawyer if you want that my case is very vital very important and my client is unnecessarily suffering the matter or the relief will be further delayed if the matter is remanded back and considered afresh you can convince the high court that please pass an order here itself so that this ring marol to go back and go into the roller coaster ride once again can be avoided and if the high court is satisfied it can do so in suridev singh's judgment the high court the supreme court has held that under supervisory jurisdiction even if you don't file a petition if the high court finds that this is a flagrant disregard of the provisions of law a sumoto orders can be passed by the high court under article 227 whether you are aggrieved or not aggrieved high court under administrative jurisdiction has felt that the subordinate court is going beyond the jurisdiction and normally 227 now came into prominence after 2002 because prior to 2002 if you all remember if you had practiced but prior to 2002 you must be remembering there was a provision under cpc section 115 115 which talked about civil revision and invariably civil revisions were filed blaming that three grounds civil revisions were there if the subordinate court has exceeded its jurisdiction if the subordinate court does not have jurisdiction if the subordinate court does have jurisdiction but did not use it three jurisdictional issues the entire civil revision used to play around that still goes on but what happened on 1st july 2002 a landmark date with effect from when the amendment to cpc 1999 came into force 1st july 2002 civil revision doors were shut against interlocutory orders today against an interlocutory order you cannot file civil revision because 2002 amendment shuts the door but what doors were shut by amendment to cpc opened up 227 the lawyers are very innovative you shut the door of a statutory provision we will open a constitutional provision and you can't shut constitutional provision so high courts were flooded with 227 petition against all the interlocutory orders and the grounds were same the subordinate court has exceeded jurisdiction the subordinate court having jurisdiction did not use it and the subordinate court overstepped on these grounds high court is flooded with 227 today so what fun the amendment committee had by shutting the door of a statutory provision doesn't make a difference to practicing lawyers we find another way like a water canal if you stop from here it will turn and go from there it doesn't stop now in afshan sandhu that afshan guru matter 2003 supreme court the supreme court held that <coughs> while considering 227 the high court must be aware of three parameters one 
that it should be used sparingly number 2 that in the disguise of correcting the error the high court should not assume and wear the cloak of appellate jurisdiction it is purely supervisory jurisdiction not the appellate jurisdiction so high court is not sitting in appeal to the subordinate court's order the high court must remember this and third which again created a confusion that under article 227 the high court is not empowered to correct the errors of the subordinate court judgment now if errors cannot be corrected what is the purpose of 227 so there a clarification came no 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 we meant two further things came Hmm? High Court, Supreme Court clarified in Suri Dev Singh that what we meant is the factual error. The High Court cannot do. But if the error is apparent on the face of record, a flagrant disregard of the provision of law, and number two. if it is resulting into injustice to the litigant now every litigant feels injustice is but right so the doors are again wide open isn't it so supreme court tried to put some curb but then said no 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 it can't be done so it said all right two things if the error is apparent on record flagrant disregard of principles of natural justice and if it is resulting into unfairness or injustice to the litigant now we lawyers just need a slight margin we are innovative enough to bring it into that category that this is flagrant disregard this is absolute unfairness and every petition has it isn't it so what was shut by cpc was substituted by 227 and as i said that 227 applies not only on the civil side but the criminal side also so chandra shekhar singh versus c r ram singh 1979 supreme court is a glaring example of it i'll just give you a story in nutshell 